Uh, well, this morning we're here at the uh, OSU OKC campus. We're actually in the student garden, which is a part of the horticulture pro uh, program here at OSU OKC. Uh, they've been nice enough to let us come and, and do some cover crop work here in the garden. Uh, this morning, before uh, you got here, we had this ground tilled and uh, loosened up uh, so we'd have a nice seed bed to plant cover crops in. We actually planted two different cover crop mixes this morning. Uh, one was a mix, that uh, commercial mix, that had about five or six different species in it. Uh, a couple of those are legumes, like Austrian winter pea is a legume, uh, and it had some grasses in it, like oats and wheat, uh, and had tillage radish in it. Uh, that was one mix. And then the other mix is kind of our homemade mix. It has uh, winter wheat in it and crimson clover. Okay, so when we were getting uh, this ground ready to plant to cover crops this morning, uh, we were fortunate enough that uh, OSU OKC had a really nice tiller. They had a man that ran it for us, so we really are thankful for that. But he tilled this all up, got the soil loosened up, so we can have a nice seed bed to put those seeds into. Uh, later on, we're going to talk a little bit about some summer cover crops, and we actually put those into a no-till area of this garden. And there, we just used a, a rake and kind of roughed the soil up, put the seed down and then rough the soil up again to get good seed to soil contact. So that, that's important for getting a stand. Um, the other thing that we would like to do anytime that we're going to plant seed, we normally have some kind of recommended uh, seeding rate that we use. In other words, how many seed would we put down per acre is normally how we think about it uh, on a big field basis. So this morning, what we did was we came out here and we measured the length and the width. And so our plots are 75 foot long by uh, six feet wide. And uh, we actually have three plots. One of these plots will be planted later, but the two plots that we planted were six feet wide by 75 foot. Uh, that gave us a certain number of square feet. We took that number, you know, just length times width, we, we got a number and then we divided that by the number of square feet in an acre, which is 43,560. Then we multiplied that times our seeding rate, and we wanted to put down about 100 pounds of seed per acre. And uh, that worked out very nice, where we actually ended up with about a pound of seed that we needed to measure out. So after we figured that out, we went to our seed and we got our scale out and we actually weighed out that seed. Uh, we split it in two. We two, did two half pound batches and that way uh, both Linda and I could plant. And the other thing about splitting it into smaller increments is like if you do what I did this morning, which I, I put it out too heavy at first and so I ran out of seed. Well, if I'd had all the seed and I ran out of seed, we would have been in trouble. But fortunately, uh, Linda did the, the right rate, so we had enough seed to finish up. So that worked out pretty good. And that's just kind of one of those little tricks that we often uh, kind of take care of. You know, whether you're spreading fertilizer, or you're spreading seeds, uh, break it down into two or three different amounts. And then, you know, if you're learning how to, how to spread that seed, uh, you can make some mistakes but still kind of recover from them. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is actually the process that we use to plant this. Now there are some nice push planters that we could have used uh, and that's a possibility. Uh, we could have used a fertilizer, dry fertilizer spreader, you know, a cyclone spreader, a little handheld, we could have done that. Uh, but we use what we call it, you might call it the hand method, I call it the chicken feed method. It's just like, you know, you're throwing seed out and this is the way seed's been planted for millennia. Before we had all this fancy equipment, that's the way it was done. After putting the seed out as uniform as we could get it, then we took uh, some rakes and raked the top of that soil and worked that seed down into the soil because we need to get it where it's not just laying on top because that seed needs uh, a good connection with the soil so it can pick up moisture and then uh, go ahead and germinate and grow. If we left it all on top, what would happen, uh, the wind might blow it away, 
definitely birds would come and eat it. And so by covering it up, it helps protect the seed and then gets us this seed to soil contact that is so key. That's a key part of getting a stand. So when we talk about those different types of mixes, one of the things that we're looking for is some type of annual grass or, or cereal grass in the mix because that adds a lot of organic matter to the soil. Our soils here in Oklahoma, because we're in the southern plains, a lot of times we're very low in organic matter. It's not uh, much, it's pretty normal to see organic matter levels around a half to seven tenths of one percent in our production soils. Where we'd like to be is two or three percent if we could get up that high. And that, that's going to take some doing to do that, but it can be done. Uh, cover crops is one way to do that. So that's, that's a great thing about cover crops that help organic matter levels. The other thing, having those legumes in that mix, legumes can actually take nitrogen out of the soil air and fix it into the plant. And then later on when that cover crop is tilled into the soil, those get released and it's like having free nitrogen for the crop that you're gonna grow following the cover crop. So there's some great things that we can do with cover crops. Uh, one last thing about cover crops is that obviously they cover the ground, which is important. Uh, that protects the soil from water and wind erosion, which is a big, big problem, especially, uh, you know, we get those 60, 70 mile an hour winds or we get three or four inches of rain overnight. If we got cover crop on a field like that, we lose very little, if any, soil because it's protected. The other thing that it does also is it shades the soil surface and prevents weedy species that we really don't want to have growing in our, in our garden or in our field from growing. So we get a lot of benefits from cover crops. Okay, so we're standing out here in our cover crops that were sown this summer. Uh, some of this cover crop that you see behind me and uh, that I'm in was sown back in June. Uh, a lot of it was sown in July. So summer cover crops do similar things for us as winter cover crops. They protect the soil, they shade out weeds. Uh, if you have legumes in the mix, which we do, uh, a lot of times they're fixing nitrogen that will be used by a crop later on. Uh, add a lot of organic matter. So you see what's in front of me here is uh, sorghum sudan, which is an annual forage grass. And uh, as most grasses go, adds a lot of organic matter to the soil. And that's part of the reason it's in this summer mix. Uh, you see uh, crotillaria out here in front of me uh, and behind me. We actually have seven different types of cover crop mixes on this little piece of ground here. Haldor Howard, who teaches horticulture here, uh, planted these and uh, got them up and growing and they look great. And so we're excited to see how this is actually going to affect next spring's garden production because these are actually uh, permanent beds. Uh, they're not tilled. Uh, all this cover crop will be laid down and, and put on top of the beds and then maybe possibly tarped to help it break down a little bit and then they'll plant their spring uh, gardens in these beds here. So it's an interesting concept. Uh, as I've said before, there are just a tremendous amount of advantages to using cover crops uh, either in your home garden or if you have a commercial operation. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.